Welcome, and thank you for clicking on this video. In the studio today, we have a Harley Benton beat bass. Let's check it out. So the inspiration for this Harley Benton bass is pretty clearly the Hofner violin bass, or better known as the Beatle bass. Construction-wise, it features a 30.5 inch scale measured from saddle to nut. The body is made out of basswood and it is a hollow body design. But back and sides are made out of basswood. This is a flame maple top. It has a maple neck, set neck design with an amaranth fingerboard. In terms of electronics, it has two humbucker pickups and it's wired to a very Hofner style control panel. And more of that control panel coming up. Also hardware wise, there is a traditional looking tailpiece and a floating bridge. The tuners are different than a traditional Hofner. These are more modern, kind of Godo appearing style, modern machine heads. Let's now talk about the control panel. And as a reference, I'm going to put up a picture here that I've taken from an electronics website and I'll put the website underneath the photo. I think this photograph very clearly outlines what the control panel actually is supposed to do. On this Harley Benton, they very much copied the same control layout. So you have a volume control for the neck pickup, a volume control for the bridge pickup, and then three toggle switches. The first switch, switches between what they call rhythm and solo. With it on solo, it's actually the bass at full 100% output. The rhythm section is supposed to be a bit of a volume cut. The bass on and treble on switches is where things get confusing. In the off position, both pickups are actually on and you can independently control the volume blend using the volume pop controls. When you turn the bass control to the on position, you turn off the bridge pickup, so you're only running the neck pickup, and it also engages a capacitor that rolls off some of the highs. So it gives the, the sound and the tone of kind of a beefier, uh, bassier sound. With the treble in the on position with, and the bass in the off position, you turn off the neck pickup, so you're only running the bridge pickup, but that also engages a different capacitor that has more low-end roll-off, so it's a brighter, quackier tone. Now, somewhat counterintuitively, if you have both of those switches on the on position, it turns both pickups off. On this bass, however, with both volumes up, bass and treble in the off position, and the toggle and the rhythm, so that it's the same settings I would typically run my club bass. Nothing happens. So when I first took this bass out of the box and after I uh, tuned it up, I didn't get any output at all from this bass, which really made me scratch my head. After playing around with the switches, I came to the conclusion that this control panel with the bass and the treble switches, these are wired backwards. It still works and it still kind of does what it's supposed to do. But in comparison to Hofner's, my Hofner and every other Hofner out there, these are backwards. Now I've tried to reach out to Toman about this uh, and unfortunately I haven't heard back yet. Let's get to some sounds though. Let's start with just the neck pickup. So on this bass, we're running the volume pot for the neck pickup all the way up. This switch is now on rhythm, and uh, on this bass, we need both switches on the on position, even though they're really supposed to be off. Let's just hear the bridge pickup now. both pickups. Now let's engage the solo switch. So 
it's going to sound like a bit of a volume boost, but again, the rhythm is actually a volume cut. So let's put it on solo. Let's switch it back to rhythm. Now we're going to engage the bass on switch. This again, will only run the neck pickup and it has more of a high end roll off. Now let's do the opposite, bass off, treble on. And just for demonstration purposes, with both switches in the supposed on position, you get nothing. Well, let's put this beat bass up to a drum track and let's see how it sits with the drums. We're gonna have uh, three and a half passes. The first pass, we're just gonna run the neck pickup. The second pass, we're gonna run both pickups. For the third pass, we're gonna engage the bass on switch. And for the last half pass, with the same setting, we're gonna engage the solo switch. Here we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that playing example. Please let me know what you thought of the tones by leaving a comment below. Let's talk about some of the things I like about this bass. The one thing going for this bass, I think are the tuners. These tuners uh, turn pretty smoothly and the bass uh, stayed in tune after I set it up. 
the biggest advantage of having modern style uh, Godo looking tuners like this is it gives you much more variety about what kind of strings you can put on this type of bass. The tuners on my Hofner club bass have a very, very small string pass through hole. And as a result, the majority of flat wound E strings will not pass through it. By having these modern tuners though, you can put more or less whatever kind of flat wound strings or any other strings you want without worrying about it not passing through the hole. In terms of tone, it kind of sounds like a beetle bass, sort of. This bass right now is uh, strung with the stock round wounds. And I think if you really want to get closer to kind of that thumpy Hoffner type uh, vibe, then I would definitely suggest swapping out the round wounds for flat wounds. But with the neck pickup engaged, it's kind of there. Now let's talk about some of the things I'm less a fan of. In terms of fit and finish, there are a few things I want to point out. The neck joint, and I'll put up a photo here, doesn't look like that finish was very evenly uh, applied and definitely not evenly sanded and, and buffed out. Uh, and it, it kind of feels a little bit rougher to, to the touch. Uh, and it definitely, if you look at it under the right light, doesn't look smooth. I also want to bring to your attention uh, the pickup housing and the cover. Now I predominantly play finger style, so this would be less of a big deal if you played with a pick. But where I would put my thumb here uh, goes right over this screw right here. And in the photo you can see none of these screws are countersunk, which means I can feel all of the edges of the plastic and all of the edges of the screw. And this middle one actually is popping out a little bit. Uh, and I find it just catches my fingers in a kind of uncomfortable way. And a simple solution for this is to countersink them into the plastic. That way, the, most of the screw head will be either at the same level or beneath the plastic. In terms of playability and tone, the neck plays fine. But I, what I found with this bass is it plays not so unevenly that you would notice, uh, but it's also very unforgiving in terms of how evenly it does play, if that makes sense. And I think it might come down to how the bridge is seated against the top of this base. And I'll put up another photo here. In order to get the best string vibrational transfer from the strings through the bridge into the body, especially in a hollow body, you want the surface of that bridge to sit perfectly flush with the arch top of the body. And here there is a gigantic gap uh, between the bridge and the body. And if you examine it from, from the sides, you can tell that that gap is actually uneven. And I think as a result of that, you're getting uneven vibrational transfer between the strings through the bridge into the body. And that is resulting in what I perceive as an uneven playing bass. Now, again, coming back to the control panel, compared to a Hofner, the bass and the treble switches are wired backwards here. Uh, I've yet to hear back from Toman. I'm not sure what's gonna happen here. The bass still works, but if you're used to the layout of a Hofner, this is gonna be very backwards and kind of disorienting for you. It's probably an easy fix, but I'm not that skilled with electronics to you know, really want to mess around with that one. And finally, I think my biggest uh, issue with this bass is control panel issues aside, I don't think there's a lot of tonal variation on this bass. My assessment from the playing examples, even going through the different pickups and with the bass uh, switch engaged, it kind of sounds the same or at least not significantly different. Well, at time of filming, this bass is uh, selling from Toma for uh, 239 Canadian dollars before shipping. 
I had this base shipped to me bundled with a bunch of other stuff from, from Toman, so the shipping wasn't quite so bad. Would I recommend buying this base? Only if you were on a really tight budget and you were really into beetle bases, I would say. I think if, if you could save up a little bit more, I think the Epiphone Viola base is a way better playing, more robust uh, base in terms of construction uh, compared to this. Uh, the Hoffner Ignition and Icon series bases are kind of hit and miss based on the examples that I've uh, played. But I say I would say if you are really into kind of Beatles style looking bases, I would save up for something better. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Peace.